Good morning, good morning, good morning, saints of the Most High God. This is Reverend Essie Scott coming at you, New Birth Ministries. Uh, today is Sunday, the 27th of May, 2018, and I hope that this radio show finds you in all victory. You know you have victory in Christ Jesus. Amen. We have mercy, wealth, success, health, ruh, abundance, greatness. Support, grace, wisdom, positivity, prosperity, Yeshua, love, joy, virtue, and Yahweh. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. It's good to be back with you this Sunday on a radio show. And God is good. God is good. I hope that all things have been fine with you within the last week, since the last time we met. Amen. And... I would like to start out by saying to all of our listeners, happy Memorial Day, which is tomorrow. With Memorial Day coming tomorrow, we need to be refreshing today on a purpose of celebrating memorials. If you are like the old me, you just go through the year celebrating holidays and special days, and then that evening, marking it off the calendar in preparation for a new day. There is a reason that we celebrate Memorial Day, and that is to honor deceased soldiers, but more reasons than that one that humans are to have memorials. Everything is not always on the natural side as much as the spiritual. According to the word, everything happens in the spiritual before it manifests in the natural. Even when Satan asked God, About Job, Job's problems began in the spiritual before they manifested in the natural, and so does yours. This is why we are to stay prayed up. Job was simply in love with his creator. Being in love with God and showing it and living it attracts jealousy, so we have to be careful. Amen. Stay prayed up. It attracts jealousy, tests, trials, and we must be prepared for what is to come. In blessing God, we get blessed as well. Others see that and begin to get a little green around the gills sometimes, and you'd be surprised who those persons are. I believe that we should cover our holidays in rich prayer. We should remember the goodness of the Lord at all times and never be afraid to keep our joy, right, our faith, and our hope. Never allow anyone or anything to rob you of your blessings and especially your memories. The Bible itself is full of memorials. It was written by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, the Ruach HaKadosh, amen, through man's hands. Have you studied its memorial stories of the past? I will discuss that right after this. Amen. Amen. Will you say that with me? My soul is anchored in the Lord. Amen. That was led by Brother Jeff Collins. Um, I used to sing in a wonderful group from Bridgeville, Pennsylvania, called the Bridgeville Ensemble. And Gary Watt, Gary Walton, uh, Deacon Ray Partey, uh, my sister, girl Martha Adams, amen, the lady with the voice, Jeff Minnie. Frank Ross, Bobby Reed, and myself. And as I said, the lead singer of that song who sings it so well, Brother Jeff Collins, God is good. Amen. My soul is anchored in the Lord. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Abba, Daddy, our Father in heaven who is awesome and we love you. We worship and we adore you. We give you all glory, all honor, and all praise. Hallelujah. We come to you today, Father God, asking that you uh, step in, Father God, and give us a word today through your Holy Spirit. Use me as a vessel, Father God, as somebody will hear something from you that will make their life better, that will make their life brighter, that will cause them to be more positive and be successful in life and have victory. Father God, we are lifting up all the prayer requests that we received recently from people. There's so much going on in this world, but we know that there is a God. Amen. There is a God that has it all covered. And with God, all things are possible. So we're lifting up all prayer requests, 
no matter what they are about, we're giving them to you and let you handle them, Father God. We cannot tell you how to do your own work. Amen. You do it so well, you do not need our help. Hallelujah. And Jesus, we thank you for the work you did on the cross, dying on the cross, and then resurrecting, coming back up to show who you are. Amen. That, that we may believe in you and be covered by your blood. I cover every person that is listening to this by the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. You are covered by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to use your, your blood and allowing us to use your name. And, and we, are, we love you. We're not ashamed of you. We, we love what you have done for us. And you said in Matthew 28, 19, go out and tell all the world about you. And that's exactly what we want to do. Cause everybody in their own little way to do their ministry for the kingdom of the Most High God. And for that, we thank you, Father, in Jesus' holy name. We pray and let everybody say amen and amen. My God, my God, God is an awesome God. We're here another Sunday. Amen. I'm going to be talking about, since Memorial Day is coming, I'm going to be talking about Memorial Day. But first, I would like to read a scripture to you from Exodus 12. If you want to turn your swords to Exodus 12, verses 11 to 14. And it's one of the most well-known memorials in history. Amen. Amen. And it reads like this. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. Notice God, little g. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall uh, shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And the last verse, verse 14 says, And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generation. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Notice the word memorial. This is one of the greatest memorials in history. And what is a memorial? Let's talk about that, right? A memorial is something, especially a structure, established to remind people of a person or event, an anniversary, if you will. All right? A monument built as a memorial commemorates someone or something. A memorial service in the dead man's honor, so to speak. A statement of facts, chiefly historical, especially as the basis of a petition Amen. Now, traditional Memorial Day, a day on which those who died in active military service are, rem- are remembered, traditionally observed on May 30th, but now officially observed on the last Monday in May, also called, especially formally, Decoration Day. Amen. We understand that Memorial Day is usually held in memory of soldiers past and That is wonderful. God bless those past and present. As a former Marine, which I'm proud to say that I served my country during the Lebanon Grenada era, I celebrate my deceased colleagues as well. But today I want to take a closer look at the memories of the saints. Amen. Amen. God's generals are slowly but surely parting from us, and we need to get closer to him to hear his directives ourselves for our own lives and family. Amen. Jesus died for us all, and not just a certain few. God is raising up a new line of leaders to make new memories for future generations. Are you one of them? It's wonderful to sit under a pastor or minister for years and soak in the word and follow his or her holy leading, but when their time is through, are you ready to step in? Are you ready to follow suit and make new memories for the members of the body of Christ as we celebrate the memories of those who've passed on to glory? We must be ready. God is calling us. As I said, Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go out and tell the world, amen? A man's gift will make room for him. God has gifted each and every one of us to do something for the kingdom. Everybody has something they can do for the kingdom. 
We have a need of watchfulness today, folks. Deuteronomy 4, 9 tells us, Take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget, see, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them to thy sons and thy sons' sons. Amen. God wants us to remember what we've learned and teach them to our great-grandchildren and down the line. Amen. Have you ever noticed how quickly here in the United States that we get rid of physical memorials and ancient landmarks? So quickly it seems. Buildings are taken down so quickly anymore that while you're traveling, you would hardly know your own hometown years later if it wasn't for Google Maps, right? (laughs) And sometimes you can't even believe them. The word tells us not to get rid of the ancient paths. And I believe this is both spiritually and physically. We are not to get rid of them. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 15 to 7, verses 15 to 17, it says, Because my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity, caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths, to walk in paths in a way not cast up to make their land desolate and a perpetual hissing, everyone that passes thereby shall be astonished and wag his head, I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. Things are changing too quickly. Strong buildings are being replaced with buildings of cheaper material, and when the first wind blows by, the roof flies off. Amen. Does anybody remember those days in the 80s when people's roofs were flying off after their houses were built? These are products of microwave societies with cheap nail guns. Are we treating the elderly chock full of wisdom? Are we treating them like that as well? Are we replacing them with other sources that have no strong foundation whatsoever? Listen to what the Lord is saying. Amen. Are we replacing them? with sources that have no strong foundation in Jesus Christ. Think about that. What does sitting with our legs crossed, fingers up, eyes closed, and humming to absolutely nothing have to do with sitting quietly in prayer with our Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Be careful who you follow. Be careful what you do. There is no form nor fashion to contact the Lord. Jeremiah 33, 3 tells us to ask what we will, and he'll show us great and mighty things which we know not. He doesn't tell us to get a mat, burn a candle, and moan like you're crazy to contact God. We don't have to do all that. Beware of these neo-religions that teach man's ways. Amen. Some of them they might look cute, but does God ask us to look cute when we're talking to him? I think not. Amen. He already said in his word that he he looks on, that God looks on the inside. God doesn't look on the outside. Amen? What did your parents or the elderly in your life, in your early life, teach you? Are our fondest memories of sitting in church services until we sweat bullets while the elderly sang, praised the Lord, led others to Jesus, and went downstairs to eat afterwards? Is it being replaced with soft-spoken, no-Bible preachers who tell us that God accepts anybody repentant or non-repentant and anyone can get into heaven whether they believe in Jesus or not? Is that that what's happening here? We have our memories. Where have our memories gone? Where are our priorities? Have we come so far in time? that we still no more need to remember the ancient days? That's the question. Just because we are in new times doesn't mean we should forget our past, the ancient past. Are they embarrassing to us anymore? That's something to think about. <clears throat> Some of our children today speak as though they are embarrassed of the ancient past, and without correction, They're dropping pertinent practices of old that our forefathers did that actually worked for them and kept them free. They're on a daily basis being bound in nomenclature and are finding it hard to detect what works for them and what doesn't. 
Nowadays, they go for a label, a religious type or a figure, and they call it their God. There are so many the church ofs anymore that people don't know what to believe. Amen? The church of this one and the church of that one. And what about the church of Jesus Christ standing on a solid rock, on the solid rock I stand? Everything else is sinking sand, amen? You know what? I'd be ashamed to call uh, this ministry the Church of Essie. <laughs> it even sounds like a joke. I don't know where people are getting this from, amen? You know, and I make too many mistakes to be held in someone's vision as a God. You know, I, I said on Facebook, I believe yesterday, I think it was yesterday, and I said that um, I make mistakes. I am not perfect. And I believe God has it that way to prove that if we were perfect, we wouldn't need Jesus. Only Jesus is perfect. Amen? Only Jesus is God. Jesus was all man, and he was all God. Figure that one out. Amen? You know, when someone, you know, um, someone once told me in a general conversation that I wasn't their God. Okay, that made me kind of nervous. <laughs> and I rejected that thought. You know, they said, you were the only one who stood up for me and who was with me through my whole ordeal. No one else cared. You're my God. And they laughed. And, I, you know, I didn't like that. You know, as sweet as their intention was, I hate to admit this, but I, I did get scared. I love the Lord so much. I don't want to do anything to make him upset with me. And my sweat glands began to activate. My nerves were on edge. <laughs> I did everything I could to stop from saying that. See, I led them the proper way. Jesus is God. The Father is God. Amen? I gave our Father God all of the glory and honor and kindly asked them to correct that statement, please. You know, see how easy it is for our youth to be swayed into thinking that just anyone can be their God? Yes, it was a young person. This is really happening today, people. In talking about the old ways, <clears throat> is speaking in tongues embarrassing? What about praise and worship or testifying in church about the goodness of the Lord? You may have noticed this yourself. There are so many churches now that have deleted testifying, and they're not ashamed of it. I just don't understand. You know, for a while it was a hot topic, but the saints, I guess, grew weary and withdrew the debate. God said in his word, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Amen. And they wonder why there's no more church attendance like there used to be. Listen, Jesus is the rose of Sharon. The unsaved are the bees. No flower, no bees, no honey, period. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How can we taste with no honey? Here are some memorials for you. I have some memorials taken from the Bible, Exodus twelve fourteen, the Passover memorial, as I read, Exodus 1632, if you want to write these down, the Omer Memorial, Exodus 28, 12, the Priest's Ephod Stone, the Shoulders Memorial. If you look at the Bible, you'll find different memorials, Numbers 15, 39, the Fringes on the Garments Memorial, Numbers 16, 40, the Brazen Censors. Joshua twenty four twenty seven, the stone of memorial, which states, and Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us, for it hath heard all the words of the Lord which he spake unto us. It shall therefore be a witness unto you, lest you deny your God. See, it is a witness lest you deny your God. What stone or stones do we have to witness to us? Are the rocks crying out in our places 
and we do not see them? And finally, the Lord's Supper. If we look in Luke chapter twenty-two nineteen and Acts chapter 10, 4, I'll read from Acts 10. And it says, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. See, our prayers and our alms, God hears them. He sees them. God sees what you do. And the Bible says here in Acts 10 that what you do, when you do things like that, they are a memorial unto him. What are we doing as a memorial before God? Are you giving alms? Are you helping people? Are you blessing people? Are you blessing families, blessing churches? Are you giving to the poor, to the needy, helping out the widows, the sick, the shut-in, the orphans? Amen? We need each other. All right, and here's another memorial example. Matthew 26. <clears throat> 6 to 13. And it says, Now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when the disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? They actually called it a waste because this woman was putting oil on Jesus' head. Ooh. For this oil, they, for this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor, they said to him. Amen? So in other words, they were making it look like he wasn't worth. How do, do we do that today? Some, we have to be very careful that we're not making it look like Jesus is not worth something. If anything, we're not worth, amen, whatever it is. Amen? But when Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she has wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she has poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Now watch this in verse 13. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman has done, be told, watch this, for a memorial of her. Jesus told his own men that because this woman did this for him, he said wherever the gospel is going to be preached, around the world, the whole world, he let you know right there, that's prophecy, that, that she, it, her, the story of this woman pouring oil on, on his head is going to be a memorial say right now i just repeated it and we don't how many other pe preachers pastors and teachers are out there talking about the woman that poured the expensive oil on jesus amen on his body amen amen you know lately i've also been i've been seeing a lot about on TV and hearing on the radio and on um, social media. I've been seeing a lot about Alzheimer's as well. And you know, Alzheimer's steals the memories of unsuspecting victims. So let's keep them in prayer and pray for ourselves as a guard against this crime. I like to call it a crime. It is. The devil is busy. He knows his time is short and he's trying to do everything he can to break up families, to, to, to hurt people. Um, he's stealing people's joy. He's stealing their memories. Amen. There was a, a video on uh, Facebook where this young man was sitting there with his mother, his elderly mother, and they were sitting in a restaurant. And he was drinking a drink, and she was, um, I think, eating, it was like it was a Wendy's 
Frosty or something. And he kept asking her, he said, do you know me? Who am I? And she said, um, I don't know. Um, he said, I'm Joey. Do you know who I am? And she said, no. He said, who is my mother? And she said, I don't know. He said, well, I'm with you. How do you know me? And she said, school? With a question mark? See, the enemy, whether it's physical, spiritual, whatever, he comes against us with everything he can. This poor man went out in his car, and he was, you could see him talking on a camera, and he said, and he cried hard. He's, the mother that he was born out of didn't even remember him. Amen? We have to pray against this crime and many others. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to get started. If you believe in the healing power of the Most High, start invoking it upon others and ourselves. Practice on yourself if need be. We have to start somewhere. We can't dig Catherine Coleman or Smith Wigglesworth back up, so let's do this thing. Amen? With all due respect. They did what they had to do. They were generals of the Most High God. They're gone. Now it's up to us to do these things. Faith, strong faith. Let's strengthen our faith. They did their portion for the Lord. Calling on the name of Jesus and having strong faith works. It works. Don't let the devil make you think it doesn't work. No matter, try if you've tried it three times, try it the fourth. Jesus was all man and all God. And he touched the, the blind man's eyes, and the blind man couldn't see at first. That's second touch. The blind man could see. And I believe Jesus did that as an example to us, for us, to let us know sometimes the enemy's going to come, the enemy can be so strong, you have to have that second touch. Amen? Amen. Let's make awesome memories for others to believe and worship the Lord. That's how we should be living. We should be drawing people to the Lord, his works, his goodness, his healings, the victory that we get through him. I have so many things trying to come up against me all the time, and I'm not the only one. I'm just testifying, I'm testifying about it now. The enemy really thinks he is going to... Uh, What's the word? Embarrass me or degrade me or stop me from doing the Lord's work? Now I see why people call him a fool. The enemy is a fool. The enemy of our souls is a fool. I will not stop doing the Lord's work. I will continue to be a minister to Most High God. I didn't ask for anybody to write out a report card for me. I did not ask for anyone's opinion. Amen. I'm going to continue to do what the Lord has called me to do. Amen. Hallelujah. If I write it, if I speak it, if I sing it, amen, I'm going to be a minister for the kingdom of heaven. I am, I was, I always will be. I was born one. God tells us in the Bible, I knew you before you were even in your mother's womb. I knew what you were before I even sent you to your mother. We came from his shelves. Okay? I like to, I like to say that. I like to see it in my mind. We came from, God had all those babies on the shelf and just, poof, 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 sent them to the women. Okay? And the women birthed the babies, and women didn't even realize God knew the baby before they even got the baby. Amen? All right, speaking of memories, okay, I got a memory for you, personal memory here. My family once had a dog that we sometimes wondered if he was an uh, angelic being, so to speak, okay? <laughs> he was different than any other dog I've ever owned. His name was Zeke. He was white with long hair, with eyes and, fa- and a face like a wolf. I, you know, I honestly believe he was a wolf. His eyes were so perfect that he looked as though he had eyeliner on. To this day, I still have a picture of his eye. (laughs) And it's beautiful. It looks like somebody just put eyeliner on his eye. I really do think that he was part wolf. The dog had unusual ways and watched us like a hawk, okay? We saw this dog get hit by cars and trucks 
He ran in the woods once after he got hit on a seven-degree day. I will never forget that day. And he was gone for like two or more days in the icy weather. I just knew he had to be gone. He literally got hit by a truck, dropped, rolled, and ran in the woods by our house. So my kids skipped school one day to find him. He meant that much to us. He was family. One Easter, well, that's Resurrection Sunday to the politically correct, we were all eating our wonderfully made dinner and something happened to Zeke. He began to look out of sorts and laid down and died in our prison. It was horrible to see. I asked my kids, is Zeke okay? And they ran over to him quickly and they said, Mom, I think he's dead. And he was. The three of us witnessed it. He wasn't breathing. Zeke was gone. The three of us immediately got down on the floor and prayed over that dog. We begged him to come back and pled the blood of Jesus over his body and commanded death to leave. That dog began to open his eyes. He stood up slowly, shook himself off, and began to knock us down and gave us kisses. What a day. Speaking of memorial, I will never forget that. And to this day, I love Zeke. I think about him a lot. I think about him every Easter. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Mainly, I remember how God brought him back. Now, if we can save a dog from death, I know what we can do for humans through the mighty power of the name and blood of Jesus Christ. And that wasn't the last time that we saved a living being from death. Oh, what the power of love can do. Amen. What are some of your brightest moments in time? Think about it. Take out some time and sit back and think of some wonderful memories of your own. Israel has theirs recorded as a reminder and for history and truth's sake for us as an example. What do you repeat? And remember, pass it down to your children and children's children. Don't let the hardships of life rob you of your joy. When we were little kids, we had strong imaginations, didn't we? Do you remember the things that you used to think about when you were a little kid? And, and it's just something about how life can drain that away if you allow it to. As you get older, you, know, you get responsibilities and everything and things change. You know, what happened? You got older and you got responsibilities. Life happened, right? But that doesn't mean that you cannot go back once in a while and dream. Amen? Relive the good times. Shun the bad times. You don't want to make memorials uh, over bad times, right? Amen. Shake the bad times off. You know, when I you know, was a teacher for uh, nine to 12 years old, year olds in um, a church I used to go to, a Bible college. We used to sing a song called Shake, Shake, Shake. Shake the devil off. Shake, shake. Shake the devil off. Well, shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil off. In the name of Jesus, shake the devil off. And the kids loved that song. We would stand up and we'd just start shaking. And they would lift, lift, lift. Lift Jesus up. And we had different little verses we'd sing to it. But every time we start, I start singing that song, the kids would love it. Amen. Shake the bad times off. There is no sentence in the good book that says that you must continue to keep bad memories in your heart. If you are keeping bad memories in your heart, they're going to fester and you're going to end up getting sick. All you're going to do is hurt yourself. Some people are sick today because they continue to have bad memories. It's bad for you physically and emotionally anyway. Bad seeds grow bad fruit, and that's not good for your health. Did you ever see a bad tomato seed? And that plant grew up with rotten, unsalvageable, damaged, and diseased tomatoes. I had, I had a few. And you're, you're all happy, and as the weeks go by and the months go by, you go from, what, April? Well, you go from May, June. And they're supposed to be coming up in June. 
uh, and they're looking a little funny. They have little brown spots on them. The end of June, the beginning of July, the rot, bad seed. Amen. Think about the good stuff. Amen. Will you do that from now on? Even if you fight yourself. My daughter and I was watching last night The Matrix. We wanted to sit down and watch The Matrix again because we heard there were so many, like, biblical references in it, and I found a lot. He was fighting himself. Sometimes you, sometimes you have to fight yourself to get a good memory. Okay? Fight that negativity. There was a, I had a poster one time that had a woman on it, and she had her arms crossed. She looked like she was dressed like Wonder Woman. I think I still have it here somewhere, and it says, Fighting negativity like a champ. <laughs> and I love that poster. I love fight negativity like a champ, y'all. Okay? If something comes to you and it's not good, kick it to the curb. Don't accept it. Don't throw your pearls before swine. Amen. If somebody treats you funny and if you don't think that you can have a decent relationship with them or something's just odd or something's not going right, anything, a, a relative, a friend, a job, or whatever, take it to the curb and trust that God will give you someone or something better. Amen. Let's make some good memories. Okay? I'm going to read this to you and then I'll end. This is Philippians chapter 4, verses 5 to 8. And some of you have heard it before. I love these verses. And I'm going to leave you with this. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, verse 8 of Philippians 4, 8. Circle it, write it down, write it on your wall, your windowsill, something. Make a poster. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, see, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on beautiful things, everybody. Your mind will become more positive. You'll begin to do better things in your life. Your body will react. Do you know our bodies react to what our minds think? And that's true. That's why I say some people are sick because their minds are sick. If you have a healthy mind, that means you have a healthy heart. Goodness is coming up out of your heart. Amen? Amen. So if you want your body and if you want your life to be good, think on heavenly, kingdom-minded things. Think on good things. And every time the enemy comes to you with the, something negative, something bad, rebuke it in Jesus' name. Guess why? Why I say that? And the answer is because you can. There, I, I feel that there are, I believe that there are people out there right now who do not recognize the power of God in them. God is in you. i got a funny feeling I might end up saying that every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> it is that important. I went through so many things in my life. I didn't recognize this. He's in me. God is in me. He's not above me. God is not a billion miles in the sky, unreachable, unattainable. That is a lie of the devil, and I do not accept it because God's word says, he said, know ye not that you are the temple. Of the most high God. And I'm saying that to you right now. Know ye not that you are the temple of the most high God. Get with it. Start using his power. He said you can use it. Gave me your car to use for every weekend. Let's say every Friday for three months. Just to help me out because you know I need a vehicle. 
and you say, um, Reverend Nessie, you could use my car every Friday. Every Friday, do whatever you have to do every Friday, just bring it back, you know? Um, how would you feel if I kept calling you on Thursday night saying, can I still use the car Friday? Every Thursday night, can I still use the car Friday? Friday morning, can I still use the car? Wouldn't it be like, well, didn't I already tell you you could use, just take the key and take the car? And this is what it's like. We keep asking God, asking God, help, do this, help, help, help. And, you know, all you have to do is speak it out, speak the word. The Bible says we speak things that are not as though they are. Start speaking things into your life, good things, amen, good memories, good things for your family, your children's children. Hallelujah. Amen. Think. Think upon those things. Amen. It's okay to think about the good things in life. Are you saved? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? If you haven't, just say this. Dear Jesus, forgive me for my sin. I thank you for being there for me. I apologize. Forgive me for everything that I did that was against you. It was anti-Christ. Amen. Jesus, thank you for being my Savior, my Lord, and my God. I love you, and I appreciate you. Amen. Amen. And if you said that, if you've accepted him as your Lord, your Savior, and your God, and your God, welcome to the family of God. Amen. Now go find yourself a Bible-believing church that teaches the full Bible and not just part of it, that don't have pulled out sections of the Bible because they feel it's not important. Amen. And learn of him. Learn of Jesus. And don't forget, Matthew twenty eight nineteen. go out and tell other people about him. Okay. This is, you know, this is, <laughs> I'm in a networking business. Okay. <laughs> okay. And that's exactly what you're doing. I'm, I'm, I network in my ministry. And I network in my personal life. And that's what you are. You are you are now a networker. If you've accepted Jesus Christ, I'll leave you with this. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and you are trying to keep him all to yourself and you're not networking and telling other people about him, there is a problem. Okay? So tell people about him. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. I hope that this helps somebody. I hope you somebody somewhere heard the Lord speaking to them. Amen. Because God is good. He doesn't leave out anybody. He go he leaves the ninety nine to go back to the one, to get the one. Amen? He's a good God, and he loves you. So, Reverend Essie's signing off, but always remember what I always say. Jesus is always Lord. Amen and amen.